Hello, my name is Gonzalo Abad and in this video tutorial we are going to do a brief introduction related to electric technology and electrically propelled vessels. So the contents of this presentation or of this tutorial is divided in five different parts. An introduction, then we will see the electric power system and the variable speed drive of a vessel. Then we will shortly see an example of a real vessel. To continue with the short historical evolution of vessels. And finally, we will discuss uh, about the future charts. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. And first of all, I have to say that the sources or the main uh, books from this information of this tutorial is taken is are these two books. Both books have been edited by Wiley and the first one is entitled Power Electronics and Electric Drives for Traction Applications. Here in these books in chapter 6 there is one chapter totally dedicated to ship propulsion and electric technology to ship uh, related to ship propulsion. And then also there is an, another second book, which is entitled Encyclopedia of Maritime and Offshore Engineering. Uh, and here also there is another chapter, which is entitled Electric Propulsion Case Studies. So all the information related to this video tutorial can be found on these two books. So there are many examples of modern of vessels. We can find many types of different ships or vessels nowadays. We can find passenger ships, we can find tankers, we can find bulk carriers, container ships, field support vessels, dredge, icebreakers, and so on and so on and so on. The power of these vessels can range from some kilowatts up to a quite considerable high power of 60 or 50 or even more uh, megawatts. So here we have two examples of new or modern vessels from the manufacturer Ulstein, which is in Norway. And here, first of all, we have a platform supply vessel, Blue Storm, which is a very sophisticated uh, vessel full of technology and full of science and obviously full of a very rich and sophisticated uh, electric technology as well. And then here as a matter of example also we have another type of vessel which is a seismic research vessel Polar Pusadira that again although it is dedicated to do some different uh, tasks Compared to this one, it is also very sophisticated and very, very new uh, in relation to the technology that is using. Okay, so let's go with the second part. And we will see very shortly the electric power system, the typical electric power system of a vessel. First of all, we should start by means by mentioning the electric power generation. The electric power generation in a modern vessel very often is made by a prime mover, which is a diesel engine, more commonly. And this diesel engine is mechanically coupled to a generator that normally is a synchronous generator. And this generator creates the network or the grid from which all the from which of the loads of the vessels of the vessel are supplied. Then we have the electric power distribution of the vessel. First of all, we have a main switch board that supplies from the generator supplies to the rest of the elements or of the loads of the vessel. So here we have some distribution switch boards. And then we have distinguished, so we have the variable speed drive, which is this element here, 
and we could also have, we normally have, some loads. So this electrical bus, by means of the generator, is normally created at one voltage level and then for the loads, uh, in order to normally reduce those, this voltage in which it is gener generated, we have a transformer and for the variable speed drive as well, we have another transformer. So the variable speed drive is composed by the, tra by the transformer, by a power electronic converter and by a motor. The finally, mechanically coupled again to this uh, motor, we have the thruster unit or the propeller with the, which is composed normally by an optional gearbox and by the uh, propeller or the thruster itself. So this is the typical configuration of a power system of a vessel. However, normally this configuration is repeated or yes, is repeated in several parts depending on the vessel. And this is one typical uh, example of power system with this type of redundancy. In this way, what we, it is wanted to achieve is an increased availability of the power system and of the loads, just in case something uh, wrong happens. For instance, in one of the thruster units, the other one should be able to work. So in this example, we have four generation units, independent generator generation units. Then we have the electrical bus, which is connected or in some ways separated, even uh, physically separated, not only electrically separated, but also physically separated by a boost type. And then we have again the supply to the loads for, of the vessel or the hotel loads or, or whatever it is. Again, by electrical and physical separation. And here we have two thruster units or two independent propellers, again, uh, working in normal conditions. They could be working all together, but if one something fails, maybe it could be working this one in here if this fails or in the other way around. Or for instance, if this generator unit is not working, we can open the switch and the rest of the E elements with the three generators could be working all together. Obviously with less power, but in this way we can achieve the, incre the increase of viability of the vessel. So here we have an example of a system layout in a cruise vessel in which here we can see that we have two propulsion units and here we have one tunnel thruster. Here we have the two physically separated electrical buses. Here we have the two separately electrical drives to supply these two propulsion units and here we have the main power generation and also we have here located in another part of the vessel for security reasons and for availability reasons the auxiliary power generation. So in relation to the propulsion to the propulsion or, uh, system of the vessel, we can find many different ways to do it. Here we are going to show only two main examples, two very common examples, which is the azimuth propulsion cooling system with 360 turning capability. The manufacturer is Chotel. And here we can see that, the, that this propulsion system is uh, down 
into the water while here we have a special mechanical uh, coupling and normally the electrical motor supplying or making or providing the movement of this uh, shaft is located uh, not uh, into the water but is in the in the ship within the ship another example could be the antipod propulsion system again with 360 degrees turning capability in this case the manufacturer is ABB and in this case the motor the electric motor is mechanically coupled to the propeller therefore this motor is down into the water and here we have a special mechanical system that can provide the 360 degrees turning capability of the whole propeller so there are two different concepts of uh, propulsion systems and as i said before there are many other ways to do it however we have we have only shown the most uh, these two dominant ones okay so let's have a look of the basic model of a vessel and first of all here we have a basic scheme showing the forces affecting to the ship or to the vessel so if the vessel wants to move in this direction at constant uh, speed it will experiment just some opposite uh, forces due to aerodynamic and due to the fluid dynamics some of them down the water and some of them outside the water so here what the propeller should do is to create a force that enables to make the ship or the vessel move in this direction so in order to do that to do that we use the variable speed drive that controls the rotational speed of the propeller this is the propeller we normally have a gearbox so that we the propeller due to these forces in opposition it will see rotationally an opposite torque and therefore by means of the variable speed drive we will need to create an opposite torque uh, in the opposite direction moving or just in the opposite direction to the torque um, produced by these forces and it will rotate at a given uh, constant uh, rotational speed that enables or produces this linear movement of the ship it is possible to analyze and it is possible to create uh, some kind of uh, different dynamic models here this is just one example of a simplified block diagram uh, representing the model of a ship or vessel and here just take into consideration that uh, by means of the physical forces or the physical equations uh, describing this movement we could create a just one model with a different abstraction level of the ship so here we should take also we should take also into consideration the propeller power curve and the propeller torque curve so depending on the travel in the speed linear speed we will have this type of curves and they could have different shape but they will be uh, this exponential type curves and then we should match with the maximum uh, power curve of the motor that we are using and with the maximum torque curve of the motor that we are using and this happens for synchronous and asynchronous motors 
So if we have a look at the motors that we normally can find in a, in a vessel, we could uh, find a squirrel case in the two motors or permanent magnet synchronous motors with surface permanent magnets or interior permanent magnets. And also we can find boom rotor synchronous uh, motors. As a general approach, we could say that if the power of the vessel, or let's better, if the power of the motor for the propeller is less than 5 megawatts, normally low voltage is used for the motor. A low voltage motor is used. However, if the power is bigger than 5 megawatts, the medium voltage of 3 kilovolts more or less is typically used. Not always, not always but in general, this rule uh, always is uh, met. If we are in less than 5 megawatts, we normally use an asynchronous motor. This is the most common choice. However, at lower, at lower uh, powers, nowadays permanent magnet synchronous motor are starting to be used as well. If the power of the motor is between 5 megawatts and 10 megawatts, we could find both asynchronous and synchronous motors. This one and this one. And if the power is very, very big, is bigger than 10 megawatts, the typical choice due to efficiency mainly is the bone rotor synchronous motor. However, there are many exceptions and this choice could depend on the manufacturer, the ship type and the work that it has to do and, and so on and so on. So finally here in relation to the motors, uh, I, I am showing and trying to show you one uh, real motor from this manufacturer for ship propulsion. This is an schedule case in Dutio motor. In relation to the power electronic converter, there are different configurations that we can find. Here is one, there is one transformer, then a six poles diode rectifier, then here we have the chopper, the DC chopper, and finally a two lower inverter supplying the electric motor. And very similar configuration could be this one that tries to avoid the transformer. So here, the, the, from the electrical bus of the distribution network of the ship, we directly supply the six pulse rectifier. And this is typically suitable at low voltage distribution in ships or vessels where the power is not very big. And then the remaining part is equivalent to this one, to the previous configuration. However, these two configurations are not very common because the line current quality of these poles, six poles diode rectifiers is not very good. We could say that it is a little bit poor for the weak distribution networks of the vessels. So more commonly, this type of configurations are used with 12 poles and 24 poles uh, diode rectifiers, such in here and such in here. In order to do that, we need more complex uh, transformers for the 12 pulses and for the 24 pulses we will need here four secondary and here two secondaries. However, the main advantage of this configuration is that the line currents that the network, that the ship net, ship's network 
must provide is much more sinusoidal compared to the six pulse uh, diode rectifier, which is an advantage, which is, which is very recommendable. So we could find uh, in relation to the different power electronic converter configurations that we can find in the vessels, the one that is not using a transformer and six pulse diode uh, rectifiers. Here we can see one configuration. And since this line current is of not very good uh, quality, we should use some filters, some passive normally filters, in order to avoid the problems related to the harmonics, to the current harmonics uh, that these uh, rectifiers, six pulse rectifiers, create in the network. Then also we could use 12 pulse diode rectifiers, the same configuration, but using different power electronic converter, different variable speed drive configurations with 12 pulse diode rectifiers. Here we want here we will not need as many filters, as many passive filters are as in this configuration. And finally, also with the same four propellers, same configuration, we could use 12 pulse diode rectifiers with their corresponding more complex uh, transformers. Finally, again, here we can see one converter example for ship propulsion from this Ingetim uh, manufacturer. There are many other different configurations. These are some of the most remarkable ones. This one is the one that we were speaking about in previous slide. Only one drive train, for instance, with a 12 volts diode rectifier. Then also we could, in order to achieve a different redundancy at the electric drive level, we could use two motors on the single shaft. This is not very common, but somewhere in some ships you know, and vessels it is also used. So here we place two motors mechanically coupled and these two motors could be supplied by two independent electric drives, variable speed electric drives. Then also we could use a more complicated or more complex uh, gearbox in order to couple mechanically two electric motors to a single propeller like this special gearbox. This is another possible configuration. And finally, I would like to remark as well uh, another redundancy that can be achieved by using a more complex motor with two independent uh, stator windings. So here we can could have one winding which is supplied by one electric drive and another winding could be also working with another independent, uh, independent electric drive. The motor is only one and is the only one which is uh, moving the propeller. So for instance, if this electric drive uh, fails, the motor could be still working with only one electric drive obviously with half of the power, but still working. And there are many other aspects in relation to the electric uh, technology of uh, ship propulsion that we cannot mention uh, in this tutorial, but more information can be found on the books that I have uh, uh, speak about at the beginning. This could be, these many aspects could be the control, the power generation, the distribution system, the power management, fault protection, 
for quality and so on and so on. There are many aspects in relation to the technology that are that should be covered in order to do a proper design of vessel. Okay, so let's have a look now of a real vessel and we will see just one example of the electrical distribution of this real vessel, Simon Stemin, fall pipe and rock, and rock dumping vessel, which is made by Jan de Nul, in which the owner is, sorry, Jan de, Jan de Nul. So this very sophisticated vessel, here we have the electrical distribution, and here we can see that it is composed by five different generation units of more or less 5.6 uh, mega volt amperes of power. So there are five uh, generators of this power and they create the electrical network for distribution of the different loads at 6.6 .6 kilovolts, if I know wrong, yes. And the rotational uh, speed of these uh, uh, generators is something like 720 revolutions per minute. So the electrical network of the vessel is here, distributed here by the main switchboard to the different loads of the of the vessel. Here, as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, eight uh, propellers or thrusters of different power and this different functionality for this Simon Stevin fall pipe and rock dumping vessel. They have different power, powers, 3 megawatts, some of them, and 2 megawatts, some other of them. And they have uh, several stator windings of configuration. Some of them are 3.3 kilovolts. Uh, yes, and all of them are 3.3 kilovolts. And the rotational speed as well of some of them are variable speed between 1 and 1000 revolution per minute and some other from 0 to 750 revolution per minute. The power electronic configuration of these uh, thruster units is a 12 poles uh, diode rectifiers as you can see here and two level power electronic inverters. Then also there are some other loads for hydraulic pumps that supply another motors directly from the electrical distribution created by the synchronous generator. There are not power electronic converters. And then there are also some few uh, meaning, low, meaning loads and auxiliary uh, networks for the hotel supply. So this is just one example of vessel. Okay, so let's now describe very shortly the historical evolution of vessels or ships. Here we will just provide some remarkable events of this historical evolution of ships. We have to go back many years ago and at the beginning the historians they say that uh, we use canoes then some years ago uh, some years after one in one hundred in one thousand and eight eight hundred uh, years before Christ, we used the combination of sails and oars by different civilizations 
Egyptians, Phoenicians, Romans, and so on. Then after 200 AD, uh, Viking ships and many other uh, uh, type of ships were sophisticating uh, the ship technology or techniques in terms of stability, speed, maneuverability, and so on. <clears throat> Then, and at year 1,400, um, more or less, uh, only sails were used, and they started to be used the caravels, and so on. And we can remark the Christopher Columbus uh, event that he arrives to America in this year. And after that, they, uh, the beginning of regular overseas journeys started to be produced. Then at this year, at 1,600 more or less, I would, write, I would like to remark Jerominimo de Ayanth and Beaumont because he maybe develops the first steam turbine and designed the first submarine. Obviously, many other individuals work on the steam power before, but he did a very remarkable design, very so many centuries ago. However, at this year we can say that it started the steam turbine era in ship propulsion after James Butt built the first modern steam turbine. Then, at this year, we can remark as well another Spanish, uh, Isaac Peral, because he developed the first submarine with electric motor, propulsion, and batteries. Some few years later, the steam turbine with electric generators started to be used after Charles Carson develops the steam, the steam turbine propulsion coupled to an electric generator. By this age, by these years, obviously, they didn't use power electronic converters. But steam turbines with electric generators were used because the generator, the electric generator, was already invented, invented some years ago. Then, more or less in these years, the diesel and electric ships appear. After diesel patented its diesel engine in this year, and here we have one typical example given of a ship, the Vandal, of this year, and it has th three diesel engines coupled to three synchronous generators, and supplying three motors driving the propeller. Here again, they did not use power electronic converters. So here we can see the, the evolution, steam turbine, turbine alone, a steam turbine with electric generators, and here DSL with electric generators and motors. Then some years later, Something curious happens is the returning of steam turbines driving directly synchronous machines coupled to the propellers. And that was basically motivated by the strong competition between transatlantic passenger lines. So we went from the steam turbines to the diesel and again to steam turbines. And then again, by this year, more or less, the diesel propulsion again. Uh, return. Efficient and economically favorable diesel engines were created and a steam turbine and electric propulsion begin to be displayed and displayed, displayed again. So you see that up and downs between technologies that was uh, happening during these years. While finally, more or less in the 80s and between 80s and 2000s, 
the, D the combination of DSL and an electric was, uh, was dominant. There was a massive penetration of electric propulsion based on voltage converter, based on power electronics, and combined with diesel engines, engines as prime movers. The technology that we have been speaking before in the previous slides was emerged in these years. And, now, and nowadays we can say as something remarkable that the beginning of hybrid propulsion with batteries is starting to be. And DC distributions at, uh, at the vessels is started to be introduced. These are just some remarkable events explained in a very simplified way. Okay, so let's continue with a short view of the future trends. And here I will, I would like to just remark one uh, tendency. There are many, there are many tendencies, but just one. The DC distribution networks, including batteries. If in the past the distribution networks of the vessel were in AC, nowadays a clear tendency to create and to produce DC distribution networks have arisen. So the generators moved by prime movers of diesel engines or whatever, and the generators are in AC, but AC-DC converters are starting to be located here in order to be able to move or to achieve variable speed at the generators. And the main advantage uh, that we achieve with this change is a better efficiency of the diesel engines, therefore a reduction of the full fuel consumption. And thanks to these DC distribution networks as well, we could put here, we could introduce energy storage, for instance with batteries, that provide energy from these batteries to the DC distribution networks and probably um, therefore provide energy to the propellers. This tendency of the DC distribution networks is starting to be uh, at low powers and low voltages in vessels of not very high power but little and by little these uh, DC distribution networks are starting to be used more and more. So the technology is changing in this way. The philosophy maybe is very similar, but the distribution will be in DC. Okay, so that was all. This is the end of the tutorial and I hope it was interesting and useful for you.